What's up everybody, Showtime Doctor here, coming at you. We just got done with the event. New event's pretty good. Uh, I'll go into that in another video, but let's go ahead. I'm going to do a proper banner review like I promised this morning. And then go the hell to sleep. <laughs> so we got two new banners here. Go ahead and go over the heroes. So Edwin, you might have seen my reaction on the patch preview video. Uh, this hero seems like he's very uh, PvP heavy. Go ahead and get into his abilities here. Increase light dark allies attack by, it's going to be 20% at 6 star. Passive and prints verdict signet on enemy for 2 turns. On 2 enemies for 2 turns at the start of the turn. 20% additional damage and activate special effect based on what type of enemy you're attacking basically. 100% chance to apply melancholy for 1 turn on an attack. So basically, if you're attacking an attack type, you're basically negating all their buffs. Defense type, you're ignoring defense. Support type, you have a 50% chance to silence. Hybrid type, you're decreasing the caster's cooldowns by one turn. I'm assuming they mean increase, not decrease. That would be bad if you're helping the cast the hybrid to decrease his cooldowns. Or actually, maybe you're decreasing your own cooldowns. Oh, my bad, yeah, you're decreasing your own cooldowns. Okay, there you go. So, uh, passive 60 removes one buff from the enemy affected by Verdict Signal, Signet, rather, the start of the turn. 70% chance to obtain one Barrier Signet when attacking, consumes three Barrier Signets to nullify damage taken. When attacked, obtains three Barrier Signets at the start of the wave. So basically, he's going to have those no matter what, unless maybe it's dispellable, I'm not sure. Skill 1, Rune Mark, 70% attack to 2 targets, 35% chance to apply Verdict Signet. Once again, that was this skill. The different of ability, depending on your class. Inflicts damage equal to 200% of attack to 1 enemy. Increases the caster's attack by 30% for 1 turn and crit strike chance. So basically a self buff. That's probably where you're going to start with in most cases. And then it's three, penetration damage, 120% to all enemies, 35% chance to decrease recovery amount, stop healing, so... Really looks like a really strong PvP character. I was talking with my guildies, we're having problems thinking that Verdant Signet is going to apply to any bosses, because I've never tried it, but I'm just guessing Melancholy is not going to apply. Ignore Defense probably will, Silence won't, I can guarantee that one. And, you know, decrease your own cooldown. So he might be super good. He might. He's definitely good in PvP. PvE, the jury's still out. We'll see. Once again, they got the bonus rewards here for you two guys. Abel. I'm very familiar with Abel. Abel is a guy, by the way. I always mistake it for a girl. Abel's a guy. So 20% here for light wind HP recovery. Wings of Salvation. Basically, it restores HP for the lowest ally at the end of every turn. Decent, decent right there. Gonna be 10%, I think, when you... It might be 8, actually. I forget. Uh, applies Butterfly Wings to the caster on his passive. Grants Wings of Protection to the caster. And two adjacent allies for one turn at the start of the wave. Uh, we'll go into that skill. It'll show you what it does here. So, Luminous Butterfly, it's your typical heal. It does bonus healing if you're uh, light. Skill 2, applies Butterfly Wings and becomes immune to damage over time for 2 turns and restores 20% HP. Grants Wings of Protection to the caster and 2 adjacent allies to absorb damage for a turn. So his 60 basically puts that on you at the start of a wave. Not just uh, one battle, but every wave. So it's really good, actually. Uh, anyone that hits you, they're going to go ahead and heal you up, even penetration damage. The only way to get through it is to dispel it with like uh, like Morgan's 2. Something like that. Ruby can dispel it. Three, right here. Grants abnormal status immunity for all allies and for two turns and restores 40% of their HP. You can also talent that to where it'll do, uh, I think it's a 10% HP recovery per turn for two turns. So just a big fat heal. Able, not, not a top tier support, but he's got his uses. Yeah. And then Rebecca. Do I really need to explain Rebecca to you people? <laughs> we all have her. But basically, life fire, multi-strike, 70% chance to decrease all skill cooldowns by two turns upon killing an enemy. So if you can get a powerful Rebecca that kills, she's going to be strong for you. 
For 60, inflicts mark, uh, excuse me, inflicts 30% more damage when attacking a mark target, so there's some mark synergy there. Uh, on her 1, 35% chance that it uh, inflict additional damage equal to 20% of attack on top of a 1 target. Storm, it's basically a little AoE, 3 person. And then this does penetration damage and marks. If you can get the mark up before, that's going to do more damage. Solid here, probably about third right now with the release of uh, Edwin or Light Deeps. That's your banner review for that one. Decent banner, depends what you need. Uh, personally, I'm, I, I've thought about it. I'm going to have a wait and see on the banners, but I'll get into that more later. So now we're going to get to the Jacqueline banner. Jacqueline's a pretty interesting character here, so this is going to go ahead and be 20% as well. When Dark Allies Multi-Strike. Passive Skill Punishment. 70% chance to remove Abnormal Status Immunity from all enemies at the start of the turn. Only person I've seen that does that, by the way. So that's something good for PvP. 20% chance to put a target affected by Abnormal Status to sleep for a turn. 50% chance to remove all buffs from the target affected by Abnormal Status. So obviously PvP, that can be super strong. Her 60, passive here. 50% damage when attacking a debuff target. Additional damage, rather. 100% chance to inflict damage equal to 100% of attack to an enemy who finishes the turn without defending or using skills. And 50% chance to force the enemy to reveal weakness for one turn. Reveal weakness. Basically, your next hit against that target is a crit. So, obviously, that's really strong overall. And I'm guessing that this part with the inflicts damage 100% for an enemy who finishes a turn without defending, that must mean that there's like a stun or some other type of effect to where they can't get out of it, and then she's going to go ahead and do damage on top of that. So if you have a CC strong team, that seems like it'll be good. Her 1, the unique thing about her 1 is it's attacking 3 people for 60%. 100% chance to inflict 10% additional damage if you got some abnormal statuses up. Skill 2, Endless Sermon, basically 3 attack, 110%. I'm not sure if it's 3 together or 3 spread out like Kane's 2. But it sounds like it's going to be spread out from this one, from what it says, rather, how it's described. 50% chance to put targets to sleep for a turn. 70% chance to put targets to sleep for two turns if they have any debuffs. So you got some sleep meta right there. She's win, by the way, if you didn't catch that. And three, dividing slash, inflicts damage equal to 165% of attack to three enemies. 35% chance to stun for a turn. Inflicts 8% additional damage for each debuff on the target. So debuffs are her bread and butter, man. All types of abnormal status. She even gets rid of abnormal status buff. So. Looks like a pretty good character for PvP. Uh, jury's still out, you know. I love her design. Her design's pretty cool. But we'll see. Ruby. Top tier character. Uh, basically, her leadership's extra damage for wind heroes if there's five wind people on a team. Uh, passive skill, 70% chance to remove defense and attack buffs at the start of the turn. That's very strong. It's going to be 80% when she gets to 6. That's also going to be 60 when she gets to 6 stars. Uh, passive 60, let's do this. 50% chance to decrease all skill cooldowns by one turn when attacked. Restores 20% of HP when cooldown is increased. I've had, like, I've hit her five times in PvP, and she just heals up, like, almost all the damage. It's pretty, uh, aggravating, especially if you have someone like Aru who doesn't hit that hard in the first place. So, skill 1. Basically, her skills are 100, 200, 300. Decrease skill 2's cooldown by 1, decrease skill 3's cooldown by 1 on her 2. Pretty much, like once, remember, she's restoring HP every time her cooldowns are decreased. And her, three, her uh, ultimate inflicts 300% of attack. Really strong, really good. She's probably going to dispel really hard counter to Kane. Not super, super hard, but pretty hard. The thing that Kane can do to her is if Kane gets that anti-heal debuff off on her, it screws her up. But otherwise, super solid hero. So if you're looking for a ruby, maybe this is your banner. Ramu, another solid character. Not quite top tier, but pretty damn close. If you play PvP, you see her all the time. Uh, increases wind and water allies. Max HP by 20% at 6 stars. Restores all its HP. I'm going to go ahead and say it's 8%, probably. I don't have her myself yet. Uh, at, the st at the end of a turn, rather. Really tanky hero, by the way. I see a lot of people tank her out. 
Passive, revive one time upon death, 100%. Uh, uh, oh, that's her 60. I'm actually kind of... I wish that Netmarble would stop putting passive revives in the game. I hope that they stop that, because there's too many heroes with it already. You, you gotta think outside the box, Netmarble. Come up with some other stuff, because revive is already kind of ridiculous. But anyways, I'll cover that another time. It flicks damage equal to 100% of attack on her and 20% chance to stun. This is actually very underrated, her one, because I've fought lots of uh, Ramus in PvP that have counter. And when she's countering and she's stunning you a lot, if I'm assuming you skill this up, it probably goes to like 35%. Really annoying. Just super annoying. Can shut down even like a good cane. Her second skill, it's a big heal here and decreases debuff duration by one. And her, her uh, ultimate skill here revives up to two allies and restores 40% of HP. Really good, one of the better revives in the game. Just because it revives up to two people there. So another solid, solid character here. She's good in PvP and PvE, although a little bit better in PvP. So, that's your banner review. And then, we do actually have a new admin hero. Um... I don't know if I should really get into that because it's a little hard to review from here. Ah, we can go ahead and do it. So the new four-star admin here, just let me go to the codex and I'll pull them up. I believe he is here. Uh, yeah, there he is. Okay. So this guy, he looks like super anime. He's pretty funny, Tayo. Kind of like a mix between like Zell or Sanosuke from Roni Kenshin. <laughs> so anyways, but this guy looks so good. He's the most impressive character. I'm gonna have to wait and see like on Pepe's stream if he can get him on farm. And hopefully maybe we'll have a shot towards the end of the week. We'll see. Uh, so his uh, leadership here, increased counter-strike chance by 20%. That'll make more sense later. He's water, by the way. Obtains one hot-blooded instinct when attacking or attacked on his passive. And each hot-blooded instinct increases critical strike chance by 1%. You can already see where this is going, right? Landing a critical strike consumes all hot-blooded instincts, inflicts 50% additional damage upon counter-attack or multi-strike. 60 increases critical strike damage by 20% for two turns upon landing a critical strike. Stacks up to three times. Oh boy. Decreased damage taken by 70% for two turns and guarantees counterattack when the caster's HP reaches 50% or below once per battle. So that'll make a lot more sense once you see the rest of his skills here. Dawn is one, 100% chance, one target. Additional damage equal to 25% of attack for each hot-blooded instinct stack. So you can see the damage multipliers are already nuts for this guy. On his 2, inflicts damage equal to 120% of attack. That ignores defense to the target. And two adjacent enemies. Increases all allies, excluding the casters. Attack by 30 for one turn. Decreases caster's counter-strike chance by 50% and multi-strike chance by 50%. Because if he had counter and multi on top of all that... I mean, he, he can still get it anyways. Obviously, this gives him a guaranteed counter. But yeah, if he was getting that every turn, this guy would be so ridiculous with the stacking hot-blooded. So he's already ridiculous, though. So on his ultimate here, Dynamite Punch, inflicts damage equal to 300% one enemy. 60% chance to stun the target for two turns. 100% chance to decrease damage taken by 70% for one turn. So this guy, he's like a big cycle of just damage amp. And decreases his damage taken. So you're I'm not gonna speculate on the perfect way to fight this guy, but you're probably gonna have to take in a Ruby. Because he's water. And not not only for that, but for the dispels, because you're gonna have to dispel this guy like crazy. So just to keep him in check. You know, get some of those debuffs on him as well, like attack down, etc., and your mitigation of. So it'll be interesting to see. Maybe Cordelia's time to shine is now. 
Because Cordelia has a lot of, she's a wind tank and she has a lot of damage, uh, like a shield and uh, a damage immunity for certain heroes and stuff. But yeah, this guy's really nuts. So. But anyways, guys, that's your banner review. So good luck to you if you're pulling for these banners. I'm going to take a wait and see approach. Uh, I got a decent amount of crystals here, but I'm taking a wait and see approach just to see how these heroes shape out. I'm not going to pull too fast, so. Alright guys, so that's been your banner review for 7-Eleven, all the new banners, farm hard, get strong, maybe wait and see, we'll see. And uh, stream this game on Twitch, Showtime Doctor, twitch.tv slash showtimedr, come check me out sometimes. Let me know in the comments what you think about these heroes, if they've done well for you, if you managed to pull one. And I will catch you again as soon as I find some relevant info to bring you guys. Be looking for a rune video on the next day. So, peace out. Later.